The Canadian Ice Service uses SAR daily to track sea ice, glacial ice, and lake ice. All these are important for safe navigation. As I said at the beginning, our mission is to provide the most timely and accurate information about ice in Canada's navigable waters. The ICE Service works to promote safe and efficient maritime operations and to help protect Canada's environment. Most of our monitoring work is accomplished through space-based SAR imagery. So imagery arrives at the Canadian ICE Service on a daily basis from a number of different satellites and sensors in near real time. But it's the SAR imagery that's pr that provides most of the information. After a SAR image is acquired and processed at one of Canada's satellite receiving stations, it usually arrives at the ICE service in under an hour. The imagery is analyzed by image analysts and forecasters for var various forecast regions of the country, ranging from the Arctic to Hudson Bay, the East Coast, and the Great Lakes. The results are combined with other sources of information to produce an ice chart that is then accessible to the public. In addition to sea ice, icebergs are also identified and tracked. This information is shown as either an iceberg limit or in a separate chart that shows iceberg concentrations. SAR imagery is also used to track ice islands that break off from northern glaciers and occasionally float into shipping lanes. Most recently, during the summer of 2020, a large part of northern Canada's Milne ice shelf collapsed and its rem remnants are floating in the Arctic Ocean. This event was captured by a series of European Sentinel-1 SAR images that were processed by the Canadian Ice Service. SAR is also used to monitor freshwater ice that occurs on the Great Lakes, which are navigable and accessible through the St. Lawrence Seaway. Ice starts to form on the Great Lakes in December and can be present in some areas of Lake Superior into early May. The additional benefit of all this monitoring is that SAR can be used to identify and track potential oil pollution in the world's oceans. When there is an oil spill in the ocean, the area with the floating oil looks very different from the surrounding waters without any pollution because the oil suppresses the small capillary waves. On SAR imagery, these areas of oil pollution look darker because they reflect less radar imagery energy than the unpolluted water surface around them. This type of monitoring can obviously be carried out during any time of day or night and when conditions are cloudy or foggy. SAR images of the ocean surface show the impact of the near surface wind field and the ocean surface roughness. The higher the near surface wind speed, the rougher the ocean surface becomes resulting in increased radar backscatter and brighter image tones. This relationship allows for wind information to also be derived from SAR data. The main user of ice information is the marine community, including the Canadian Coast Guard, shipping companies, and individual merchant vessels. The Canadian Coast Guard operates several icebreakers and the latest information on sea ice conditions is crucial to their operations. These icebreakers operate year-round because ice is an impediment to shipping throughout the year. In the winter months, ice is present in the Gulf of St. Lawrence along the east coast of Newfoundland and Labrador, as well as in the Great Lakes. The city of Montreal, a major port, is open year-round and ice can be present in the access from December until April. When southern Canadian waters become free of sea ice in the spring, the activity shifts northwards towards the Arctic with community resupply. The North has over 50 communities that rely on ship visits to bring in food, fuel, and other supplies during the summer shipping season. These communities are not accessible in the winter months because of the ice conditions. They are just too difficult. In the winter, the communities are resupplied by air. Northern communities are interested in monitoring ice conditions not only for boating, but for on-ice travel as well. These communities use the ice as a platform for access to hunting and fishing and for travel between different communities. This consolidated ice becomes an extension of the land. But the ice conditions are changing and becoming less predictable. The changes are having a serious impact on the safety of travel. This is why the historical record of ice conditions is so important. Ice conditions have been observed using aircraft starting in the 1960s. This was followed by satellite observations and spaceborne SAR, starting with Radarsat 1 in 1996. 
scientists use the archived imagery and ice charts in a multitude of sea ice studies to understand the changing ice conditions. While lighter ice conditions might mean better access for shipping, they also mean worse access for those that travel on the ice. The images and charts are also important for government and the media, and ultimately the public, as a way of understanding ice conditions.